It is hot. I don't know about you, but I'm not very good at the summer. Right now, it's about nine o'clock at night and it's still 26 degrees centigrade on my boat. I'm <laughs> just... Eh. Uh, plus, do you get hay fever? Because I get it pretty bad. I didn't used to, but this summer I've had it massively. So, uh, plus the World Cup's been on and I've been enjoying that. So... Yeah, sorry, but I haven't been making too many videos. But you should be outside, enjoying the, the summer sunshine. Unless you live in Australia, then you couldn't enjoy the winter sunshine. Anyway, get outside is the message. <laughs> and hopefully, this video will encourage you to get outside and enjoy the delights of tidal rivers in Nottingham, Lincolnshire. Basically, we're going to go on board Lou's boat and try and get her further towards her destination in Sheffield and yeah we're going to come across some proper drama on the River Trent this time um, but before we do that there's two three people I want to say thank you to. Number one we've got Matthew Ormond and uh, Matthew's been in touch to basically say that he likes Pub of the Week who doesn't and also Lurcher Dogs as he has one and uh, so you'd be very interested to see Maeve pop up later on in this video. And he found the vlog first. He's been a subscriber for ages. And he also introduced his friend, Daniel, who... D Daniel G. Harmon, who is actually the first superstar rock and roll dude on the Crank It crew. <laughs> Basically, I'm incredibly impressed by Daniel because he's so super talented with his music, which you should definitely check it out in the link below in the description. And also, he basically has a blue tick of his, on his name on Twitter, so straight away, that's, you know, impressed me. <laughs> uh, another producer that I've got to highlight is Matthew Brown. Thank you so much, Matthew, for stepping up, and I hope you enjoy this video. So, here we are in Torxy Lock on a, thankfully, a very cool day with Crank It crew member Lou and her boat, Optimistic. Great name. And we've tried to check the water level here, and it seems to be fine. Seven. It's quarter past seven. Just about to go on to the next bit of the tidal river, going from Torxy Lock to Kidby in South Yorkshire. Here we go. Right, so straight away we've got a lot more activity happening on the river today. You can see there's quite a few boats lining up to overtake. Uh, it's a little bit windy, hopefully you can hear me alright. And uh, yeah, it's a lot wider, so less chance of running into a sandbank, etc. But right now we're actually fighting the tide for just for a little bit, about 45 minutes. We're actually, what I'm mostly thinking about today is the fact that we've actually left Lou's car at Torxy Lock. But um, we'll have to come back and collect that later on. Because this weekend we've got some train strikes. Not ideal. We've been travelling about an hour or so, hour and a half maybe, and um, coming to the tide now is sort of slack water in a way because uh, yeah, it's sort of reached the highest point that you can get to, and it's a lot calmer. It's hard to show you on the film, but we're certainly getting up to a bit more speed now, aren't we?
we're just coming through Gainsborough now and uh, although you can moor up here we're on a narrowboat and generally narrowboats aren't as quick as the cruisers got one coming up behind us again so we've not really got the luxury of stopping plus Lou's very kindly made some bacon sandwiches yes Unbelievable the speed some of these cruisers can actually go. But they do slow down as they pass you, which is nice. Most of them do anyway. Because um, the wake is truly shocking. For, for a narrow boat or anyway. Going through the Collins guide that I've got in front of me. <laughs> I can, when I'm not hitting my face with it. I can see there's some navigational notes and some of them say you're now on ABP waters, um, so beyond Gainsborough Arches, which I filmed just now. Um, yeah, it says it's on ABP waters and they say you've got to, it's no longer Canal River Trust, they've got different, slightly different rules and they say you've got to carry a VHF radio with you. Now that's not strictly true because I've spoken to the lock keepers on a number of occasions and they said it's fine, just keep your mobile charged up, uh, don't film any vlogs. As long as you've got your mobile phone it should be okay, but there are some spots where apparently the signal drops out, but I'm on EE and it seems to be pretty good, I've not had any problems so far, so. But it does say have a minimum of two people on board, so we've got that at least. I've met some people who have travelled this stretch on their own, so no one's stopping anyone from doing that. But uh, having two people's handy, we need to go to the toilet, like I've just gone. Because <laughs> it is a long journey. How are you doing, Maeve? You alright? Yeah, I'm a bit bored, actually. Just past West Stockwith Lock, which is the start of the Chesterfield Canal, and that's where my boat is at the moment. So I gave it a little wave, uh, but I'll see it later on. I'll be back there later on if we can get back to Lou's car. <laughs> As exciting as this all is, I mean, there is a part of you always thinking, crap, what happens if the, uh, the water like, comes over the, the bow and sort of you know, floods in or something like that, you know, you're thinking, always thinking of the worst that could happen. But you just got to ride it out and if something bad does happen, you just react to it, you chuck the anchor down, you call the coast guard, <laughs> you know. It's just when the waves start hitting the front of the boat. You're not used to it, are you? On a canal boat, it's not, not the norm, so... Woo! Gotta keep cranking. Right, little bit of drama, and that is that the expansion, the, the cooling system, the water is expanding so much and it's really pushing up the cap, that radiator cap. So the water is leaking out, we'll, we'll be losing the water and it'll be getting hotter and hotter. And I, We've slowed down and I've called ahead to the lock keeper at Kidby. I'm just praying now that the next eight miles passes uneventfully and that we can get to the lock before the tide passes. Otherwise, we'll have to just moor up somewhere or put an anchor down or something and just keep in contact with the lock keeper and make sure we're okay. Oh. One thing you can do if you get stuck with the cooling system apparently is to, um, well, if you've got a calor calorifier, is to run the hot water. So there's cool water coming in 
and the hot water that's going through that pipe in the calorifier is helping to cool the engine, if you see what I mean. I'm not an expert on all this, but that's just what someone's told me recently, and I'm giving it a go. So I'm just going to run this until it gets cool. Yeah, it's not going well for us at the moment. So I think I'm going to have to stop vlogging and just concentrate and make sure we get there. I'll update in a minute. The dra draining the um, hot water technique has worked a bit. We've noticed that the dripping has, has stopped temporarily. It's coming back slowly now though. But if we just keep it on the temperature gauge and keep running that hot water through, it should be all right. just coming up to the M180 bridge which means the average speed will be about 25 minutes away from Kidby Lock uh, and I've, I've been calling the, um, the lock keeper and everything so he says we're doing okay but we're having to go so slow just so we don't heat the engine up too much Oh, so we're about four, four and a half miles away. I just realised we went under the wrong arch of that bridge, but it didn't seem to matter. <laughs> but yeah, we don't need any more dramas right now. There are many methods of coping in potentially life-threatening situations, and this is Lou's. Just gotta dance through it. <laughs> Completely irresponsible. <laughs> right, well, this is it. This is the last bridge that we come to. We can, there's dead ahead, there's Kidby Lock. And I can't tell you how relieved I was. I obviously didn't share with Lou how worried I was because she she's paying me to to move her boat to teach her everything she needs to know and uh, actually I had to grab the tiller for this one because here you are you're seeing me do the little maneuver turn against the flow of the water following the lock keeper's instructions and just slamming it right in there it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that but <laughs> um, hopefully that sequence helps you see how hard it was for us right so here we are actually in the lock itself and um we're both a little bit on edge, to, to, to be honest with you. Because <laughs> that was pretty hairy coming in, and it's been a real test for me. Yeah. I well, think difficult you. for anyone, really, but apparently we did it okay, so... And as soon as we get out, we'll give the lock keeper a beer, I think. And that beer was pretty much the only beer we saw that day, because there no pubs in this area, um, so very hard to have a pub of the week. Um, when there aren't any <laughs> and, and out of respect for Lou who's actually driving me home um, we just got into a taxi and went straight back to Torxy Lock Right, to cut a long story short we found the car, it was still there, all good and now we're just driving back to our respective homes my boat on the Chesterfield and Lou's in Chesterfield itself Thanks for watching and see you again next time Bye! Whoa! Oh, what a pig's ear that was. Cool. talking about pig's ears. And as Maeve gets her treat, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of something extra. So here's a little video I made with my work colleagues all about what it's like to work on a boat sort of thing. <laughs> Here we go. So guys, what do you think about living on a boat? Working on a boat, could you do it? Nice. <laughs>
bet you've got SAS survival book on your shelf. You never know what might happen exactly. on walkways. <laughs>